For you deserve it. For you deserve it. There's nobody like you, Jesus. <laughs> Just love and beauty in its world. Was nothing in its world was satisfied. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup I want to drink. Your presence is here. Just love and beauty. Just love and beauty in this world. There's nothing in this world. This world and Jesus, you're the God. Jesus, you're the God. I want to We sing your prayers. Your prayers. to me. 
Let's just worship him. Let's just lift our hands. Let's lift our voices to him. There is none like him. He is just incomparable. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Let's humble ourselves before him. Maybe we shouldn't ask anything from him. But just to worship him. Worship his majesty. Just come before him. We worship you, God. And there was no Portuguese person, but we want you to take note of that. That next week, please, we do not have two services in the morning, but we have only one service. And as it has been seen, that we are uh, thanking uh, Pastor Peter and his wife, Leslie, for serving this church with distinction as senior pastor for so many years and the, um, the guys the uh, the media guys have printed envelopes and the media people if you can just wave um, or the ushers wherever you are please we are going to take a special offering uh, next week for pastor peter and sister leslie please grab one envelope with the ushers and at the info desk and go and pray about it and let us bless this man and this woman of god who have just uh, saved us so well. Right. Um, spring has sprung, as it has been said. And we have a brand new theme for the month of September. The women um, did well in the month of August. Their theme was stand up, stand out, and thrive. Uh, they convened. We gave them the entire month. They convened and they preached. Let's give them an applause. Let's thank them. Women, thank you very much. You actually did very, very well. Now, this month, as you have seen from CNN, we are talking about thriving through service. We are encouraging each other this month of September, that each and every one of us, I know there are some people who are volunteering, who are doing something in the body of Christ. But those who are not volunteering, those who are not involved in ministry, we are encouraging you to do so. Numbers 2 verse 17 says, Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward every man in his place by their standard. Each and every man taking their place. Now, we are encouraging you. We are going to encourage you to just take up your place in the body of Christ. Volunteer. There are ministries that are taking place uh, in our church and also in our connect group. Is Noxy around? Noxy, are you here? Where are you? If you can come here, if you can hear me, I just want to interview you or just say something to the church. She can hear me. Eh? Uh, Noxy, if you can just come to me as I continue. Now, um, somewhere in July, I preached from the book of Jeremiah and I, I was, the, the theme was discovering your destiny or your purpose. And I said that the book of Jeremiah is one book where when you read it, you hear God saying to Israel, I created you for a particular purpose. You have a particular uh, <laughs> destiny. Now, Noxie, Noxie is a student. She, she is my PA no, you're no longer a student. Eh? You have graduated. Now, this year, she started a connect group, a cell group. Now, when you started, how many, how many people were there? There were three. There were only three. And this week, you had the connect group on Thursday. How many people were there? 17. There were 17 people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, just, just find your place in the body of Christ and just do something. The theme of my sub-theme is um, thriving through serving, running with 
the horses. And the theme is taken from Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 1 to 5. Now when you read, plow through the book of Jeremiah, you will see, you will hear that God wants each and every one of us to identify their purpose and live towards their destiny. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for you. Not only plans to bless you as an individual, but God has plans for you to serve in his house. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, running with the horses in Jeremiah 12, the text and the context. Now, here, Jeremiah brings prayer before God. And he prays on behalf of a segment of the people of Judah who had questions, who had problems, and who had concerns. And Jeremiah articulates these concerns of this segment of the tribe of Judah. Things were not well with them. They are going through a very difficult time. You might be here today and you might be saying, Pastor, everything is well with me. You might be saying, I am at the mountaintop. Everything is well with my family. Everything is well with my career. Everything is well with my family. And we say to you, God richly bless you. But there are people who might not be like that. Maybe a person sitting next to you. Maybe a person in your row cannot say as you say. They are going through a very difficult time in their lives. Thank God they are at the right place, at the right time, and hanging around with the right group of people. Because today, God, I pray that God would speak into your situation. Now, the children of Israel, or the children of Judah, through the prophet Ezekiel, they are presenting they are concerns before God. In verse 1, they say, Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you. Yet let me talk to you about your judgments. They are saying, you are righteous. They are saying, I want to plead with you. I want to talk to you about your judgments. Now, if you read in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew Bible, you'd realize that these words or these expressions are smacking of an accusation of some sort in a very subtle manner. They are saying, are you not righteous, O God? Are your judgments not supposed to be righteous? But why does the way of the wicked prosper? Lord, I look at people and they are wicked. Everybody knows that they are wicked, but they prosper. How is your judgment? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously. You are saying you are righteous. You are a just God. But why do the way of the sinners prosper? It is natural for us to compare ourselves with other people. We have a problem. God, why do you let the people, some of them, they've never set their foot in church. But I am in church every Sunday and my life seems not to be going anywhere. My life is unhappy. These are the people who have concerns or questions before God. They say, actually in verse 2, you have planted them. Yes, they have 
taken root, they grow, yes, they bear fruit. In other words, they are saying, oh God, how can you prosper the way of sinners? How can you make these people? You planted them. They have taken root, they grow, they bear fruit. You are near their mouth, but far from their minds. These people are hypocrites. These people, even if they are in church, but they are far. You are far from their minds. And I am here, I am faithful, but my life is not together. Maybe these are the questions that you have. Why is my life like this? Why is the way of the sinners prosperous? And it seems nothing is going my way. Verse 3, but you, O Lord, know me. You, O Lord, you have seen me. You have tested my heart to what you, what self-righteousness of the highest order. They are saying, Lord, you, I am not like them. You know me. You have seen me. You have tested me. Wrong way of thinking. Wrong theology. They think that God blesses people because of what they do. They don't know that it is by the grace of God. Not by what they do. Sure. They say things that are unimaginable. They, they pray, they pray, they say, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. Huh? Actually, they are saying, God, no, please don't look at me like that. As though you have never wished God to kill someone. Here is this guy who is really tormenting you, maybe at work, wherever. This guy is just on you. Maybe you, you did not say it, but it's in your heart one day. God, just, just, God, just take him out. Just, just take. Now, how can you pray? Now, um, in the first service, I told them of our experience um, at the university. We belong to the SEM, Student Christian Movement, as teenagers. The guys who came from the north, the guy who came from Limpopo, they were more conservative in the way they looked at Christianity than us from the south. They called us the guys from the south. Now, I, I met my wife at the university, right? Now, these guys, this is what they thought. They thought that if you are in courtship, right? You, you, you shouldn't even visit, you shouldn't even visit uh, the person you are taking out. They say, they say it's sinful. They say, how can you do that? And they said, Eric, they said, how can the people be saved if you are doing the same thing as they do? No man, we are normal, we're young people. Huh? We don't do sin, we love them. So we must visit them. Now, this, this other guy, they had him praying in his room, praying about us, praying in, South, in, in northern Soto. He said, Mudimu, Barasenecha Efanghed. They are spoiling the gospel. Now, this guy was, was naming us. He was, he was naming us by name, if I remember the Morris, Elijah, and so on. And he is, he's, but a senior chairman, he says, Mudimu, Balumisha Noha, Babulaye, God, kill them. No, man. God did not, did not hear that prayer. That's why I'm here today and I'm preaching for you. Stupid prayer, wrong way of thinking. How can you pray that God should kill someone? Now it is by grace. It's not what we have done. It is by grace that we are saved and that we are who we are. Verse 4, before we come to verse 5. How long will the land mourn? The herbs of every field wither. Now the whole of verse 4 is wrong thinking. Wrong theology, the wrong way of understanding the workings of God. 
actually these people think the land is mourning because of the sins. And the herbs of every field wither because of sins. It is a wrong way of thinking. Now, many Christians think we are praying for Africa, as Pastor Boyaka has done. We are praying for Africa. We are praying for our cities. We don't like what we see in our cities. But many people think that our city will be well when the sinners stop with their sin. It's not going to happen. It's normal for them to sin. It's normal for them to do what they do. I'm here to tell you the problem is not the Zoomers of this world. The problem is not the Ramaphorias of this world. The problem is in the church. They will continue to do what they do. The girls who are selling their bodies in the streets of Hatfield and Acadia, they are going to do it until somebody has sense enough. Stand up and say, enough is enough. And we are talking about taking your place in the body of Christ. Doing something. Taking your place in ministry. We need more of you. Now, Mene Lisi is doing the evening service. He is preaching at North Side. They started something. At, at four o'clock, they go out. They go out and they, they invite people to come to church. Now, Mene Lisi, when, when he took over, we were having the attendance between, between 50 and 60. Now, their attendance is more than a hundred in the evening service because they are doing something. They are going out there where the challenge is. Let me tell you, it's not enough for you to come to church every Sunday to listen to good music, to listen to good preaching. You have got to do something in the church of God. And the nation won't be the same. The nation is going to change. Are we prepared to do something in the house of God? This is what, what we, are, we are going to do this month. We're going to encourage you. Um, last week Sunday, we had the board meeting of the school, Cornerstone Private School. Now, I'm, I'm chairing the board. And as I listen to these men and the, this woman, some of them are here. Dr. Ntabi Seng is there. Rulani is there. Advocate Nguna, are you there? You always sit at the back there. He's not here. Oh, there is there. There is sitting at the back. Now, now these people, Dudu, are you there? Dudu Matenji. There, there is she. Now, these are people. These are movers and shakers in their own professions. But here are they. On a Sunday afternoon, they are sitting together. It's not about them, but it's about uh, the preferred future of children at Cornerstone Private School. Let's give them a hand. You can do something in the house of God. Now, Jeremiah prays, he presents concerns, he presents questions, he presents problems before God. But you know what? God has the final word. God has something to say to your situation. God has something to say to what you are going through. And here God speaks in verse 5. If you have run with the footmen, and they've worried you. Then how can you contend with horses? You are running now with the footmen. And they weary you. They've worried you down. You're complaining. Now foot soldiers in the world of that time. Were hundreds, sometimes thousands of soldiers who were fighting on foot. When they were attacking another nation or another place, they sent first foot soldiers. They were not as equipped as 
the other troops or soldiers who would come thereafter. But they were food soldiers. They were there to test the might of the enemy. They were there to just send feelers to test the strength of the enemy. If you have defeated the foot soldiers, you have not won the war or the battle already. You still have to continue. Now God is saying, you are fighting the foot soldiers. You are contending with food men. And you are complaining. And they have worried you down. How are you going to run with the horses? When you run, when you contend, when you compete with footmen and they have worried you. In other words, God is saying here that I have not called you to contend with foot soldiers. I have called you for something better than that. You know what? If uh, Brother Musa is, is, uh, is leading uh, CBC, Cornerstone Business Connect. There are people in this group, some of them, they don't have businesses yet, but they are aspiring to start their own businesses. And then if you are not having a business now and you can't manage your own salary, you can't manage the food soldiers, the food man, a budget or salary, God is preparing you not to manage the salary of one person, but the salary of tens, of hundreds, of thousands of people. You've got to manage on a smaller scale because that is only a preparation of things to come. What are you doing? BSc or whatever, engineering. Now you complain as though you are the first person to do B engineering. No, actually, you are not an undergraduate material. You are a PhD material. But now, why do you complain? God is preparing you for greater things uh, to come. Uh, Pastor Buyega, how can we complain uh, with uh, a foot soldier's pledge? 600,000 is nothing. Uh, that's not where we are going. Uh, we are going somewhere. How can we, how can we complain uh, when we have uh, such an amount? Uh, my God, uh, we are preparing ourselves uh, for something bigger than that. Uh, we want to plant uh, campuses uh, all over the city. My God, uh, we are now running with the food soldiers. Uh, we are going uh, to contend. Uh, we are going to conquer them uh, because uh, we are going somewhere. You know what? When you are fighting food soldiers, it means you are in the right direction. The devil knows. The devil will not come your way. But he will send first foot soldiers. He will send a feelers, feelers uh, to you. My God, God, God is preparing us for greater things to come. Jonah 1 verse 17. And the Lord up for Jonah. God is preparing a fish for you. You don't belong there but you belong someone, somewhere. It is, it will be uncomfortable to be in the belly of fish. My God, slap your neighbor and say be strong. The Lord is preparing you for greater things. I sense in my spirit that if you look yourself in the mirror, tell yourself and Say, baby, honey, I am not uh, what uh, God wants me to be. Uh, but I'm going somewhere. I'm going to be something uh, better than I am. The Lord. Now, what are the horses? Uh, running, running with the horses. Now, uh, when my son was four years old, we went to uh, 
Pretoria show grounds. Now, I don't know, maybe he saw a horse somewhere, but the, the first time for him to come near a horse, a big horse, they, they, the police at that time, they were controlling a crowd by a horse. They, they, those horses scared the hell out of him. And he cried. Uh, his mother was carrying him. I said, no, just bring him here. Let me carry him. I told him, my son, your dad is stronger than that horse. I can kill that horse, keep quiet. Now, it didn't help, it didn't help either. Now, a horse is a strong animal. Now, you cannot, you cannot outrun a horse. But God says here to Jeremiah and these people that uh, you will run with the horses. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is in the natural realm, you cannot run with the horses, uh, but spiritually, I'm giving you capacity. I am giving you ability. You are going to run with the horses. You are going to compete uh, with things uh, you never competed with before, and you are going to run with the horses. You know what? What you are now, has been predetermined in the book of Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Before I formed you, in the whom I knew you, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God has predetermined that you are going to run with the horses. This is what God is preparing us to do. I don't know your situation presently. Maybe you are an employer, an employee, but I see that God is preparing you to be an employer. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know your salary. Maybe your salary has four digits. God is preparing you for something better than that. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Stop complaining. Run with the footman, for God is preparing you for greater things to come. Where are you now? You are walking with footmen. One day you are going to run with the horses. May the name of the Lord be praised. One day you are going to thrive. One day you are going to run with the horses. Zig Ziglar says, every successful person has a painful story. Every painful story has a successful ending. Accept the pain today and get ready for your breakthrough. Enjoy your pain today. Run with the food, men, for the Lord is preparing you for greater things to come. An anonymous author says, it does not matter the size of the bottle, the cream always stays on top. It doesn't matter where they take you. You will never be the tail. You will always be the head. You will always be on top because this is your nature. John R. Rice says, do not put a question mark where God has put a full stop. The Lord has predetermined. The Lord has spoken to your life, to your situation. Let them continue to put question marks. Let them put commas. Tell them the Lord has put a full stop already. I am going to be successful whether you like it or not. Whether the devil likes it or not, the Lord has finished my story. Arnold H. Glasso says, the key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing the egg. Some of you are in a hurry. You want the chicken. Be patient with God. It's coming your way. The Lord will do it. Just be patient. The, the, the egg is hatching. An anonymous author says, no one manufactures a lock without a key. Similarly, God won't allow problems without the key to your solutions. Let me tell you, there is a key to your problem. There is a key 
to your solution, uh, to, to your problems, what you are going through now. The Lord has a word for you. The Lord will make a way for you. God, as I was preparing this message in my closet, uh, I said, God, how can he make me say that? Uh, God said, go and say it. Uh, tell them, uh, whoever, whatever you are going through, uh, believe, put your trust in God. It is not a coincidence. It is not an error. It is not a mistake that you are going through what you are going through right now. The Lord has something better for your life. You better be patient. You better run with the food men. The Lord is preparing you for another level. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is going to elevate your life. You will never be the same. There are situations that are buffeting you. There are situations that are coming against you. Endure. Run with the food men. The Lord is making you stronger for the other battle. For the other battle. You are going to run with the horses, your breakthrough, your miracle is along the way. The Lord is about to blow your mind. The Lord is about to do something in your life. I believe it. I accept it. That God is sovereign. God can do anything in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for you have, you are preparing us for greater things. We are going to respond to the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God.